morning. A uh, blessed uh, Merry Christmas uh, to you and to your families. If you have your Bibles with you, can I ask you to open it to Luke chapter 2, uh, verses 8 to 20. This will be our passage uh, this morning. Luke chapter 2, verses uh, 8 to 12. Uh, praise God for, uh, for Revin, uh, Aaron, and, uh, and Rex uh, leading us uh, in that song of, uh, of uh, reminding us that Jesus Christ is the, the light of this world, that no matter what, what darkness uh, we are in, the light of the Lord Jesus Christ will continue to shine. And even though uh, we face uh, troubles in life, uh, we can be assured that Jesus will be our sword and He will be our shield as well. And I like the, uh, the lyrics of the song when it says, uh, Jesus goes before us, He stands uh, behind us, and is always by our side. The message that we have uh, this, uh, this morning is, Fear God, God is, fear not, God is with us. In 2 Corinthians uh, chapter uh, 9, verse 15, Paul said, Thanks be to God for His inexpressible gift. And I hope and pray that this Christmas, God will be reminded us of His inexpressible and indescribable gift in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And with all the, uh, the chaos, the confusion, and the challenges that we face in life and in this world, we can be confident that there is nothing that we should fear because God is with us. In fulfillment of uh, the prophecy of Isaiah, Matthew wrote, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Can you turn to the person nearest you and say, Fear not, God is with us. Fear not, God is with us. This is the message that I want all of us to take home today. Can I ask everyone to stand as we read the scripture together? We will read Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 20. Let's read together from the screen. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. And the angels went away from them into heaven. The shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with the, and found Mary and Joseph, and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. Father God, we want to thank you for your word. We thank you, Father, for your presence in our midst this morning. I ask, Father, that your Holy Spirit will move uh, in our midst and meet us, Lord, where we are, so we can respond to you appropriately. I ask, Lord, for your help. May Holy Spirit guide me, Lord. May every word that I will be uttering before your people bring encouragement to our hearts and bring glory to your name. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. If uh, you will look at the, the context of this passage in the earlier part of the chapter, we will uh, know that uh, during, during the time that Mary was about to give birth to Jesus, 
uh, Caesar Augustus decreed that a census uh, be conducted. So everyone uh, was required to go to their hometown and register. The census would give an idea to Caesar Augustus on how many and who are the people in every town. And this prompted uh, Joseph, a descendant of David, to return to Bethlehem together with, with Mary. A week ago, Linda and I, Linda and SJ, uh, received uh, five kilos of rice each from our barangay. When I asked uh, why they received a gift from the barangay and I did not, the lady said, uh, Linda and SJ were on the list of uh, residents in the barangay. They are registered uh, voters and I am not. But I said, I have a voter's ID and I am a resident of the barangay. The lady said, most likely uh, your name may have been uh, deleted or dropped from the list. But I'm still thankful, I'm content with that because having an additional five kilos of rice at home is a blessing, right? Make it two, right? For Linda and SJ, that's ten. So that is a greater blessing and I need to be content uh, with that. And I'm sure they will uh, share with me uh, part of that ten, ten kilo rice. You know? And also maybe uh, there could be another person who is in need of a five kilo of rice more than me this Christmas. So that's, that's okay. In Hebrews 13, uh, 5 and 6, uh, the writer said, Keep your life uh, free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can confidently say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me. Now, this uh, verse uh, reminds us that the key to contentment is to recognize God's presence in our life. In verse 5, it says, uh, keep your life free from the love of money. It means that we must uh, not be greedy for money. Instead, we must be content with what we have. And then take note of that uh, word, the four. This is uh, the reason why we can be content in life. We can be content in life. We can uh, uh, enjoy what we have because God said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. So contentment is dependent on us recognizing the presence of God in our life. When we recognize the presence of God in our life, uh, this will be a, a benefit for us. It says in verse 6, So we can confidently say, The Lord is my helper, and I should not fear. So if we recognize the presence of God in our life, we will be content in life. We can be assured that the Lord Jesus will uh, go before us, He will stand beside us, and He will always uphold us in His righteous right hand. The Lord Jesus Christ said to the church in Sardis, the one who conquers will be clothed in white garments, and I will never blot his name out of the book of life. I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. So even though my name was deleted and dropped in the barangay registry, I know my name will never be deleted or dropped in God's book of life. And it is the same for every one of you who believe in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. People may drop your names from their registry of friends. They may unfriend you in Facebook, but God will not. He will always be your friend. People may unfollow you in Instagram, but God will not. God will always go before you. He will stand beside you. He will always be at your back. And with that reality, this Christmas, we should fear not because God is with us. So when Joseph and Mary returned to Bethlehem, Mary gave birth to Jesus, her firstborn, in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And during this time in the same, uh, in the same region, while the shepherds were out in the field tending their flock by night, an angel appeared before the shepherds and announced the birth of the Savior in the town of David. Now take note of what happened in that event. 
when the angel appeared before the shepherds, the appearance of the angel came with the glory of God. The glory of God in this context is God's divine presence. But look at the reaction of the shepherds. When the glory of the Lord shone around them, they were what? They were filled with great fear. Why did they fear the presence of the glory of God? I am sure they know their history. They know how God has been revealing to them through the people of Israelites in the Old Testament. In Exodus 33 verse 20, Yahweh said to Moses, You cannot see my face, for man shall not see me and live. Now, in the context of this, uh, of this verse, uh, God commanded Moses to leave uh, Mount Sinai and bring the people to the promised land. But God told Moses, You go, but my presence will not go with you because of the stubbornness and sinfulness of the people of Israel. God said, otherwise, if I will go with you, I will consume your people because I am such a holy, holy God and I cannot be tainted by sin. So what did Moses do? He pleaded with God. He pleaded with God and said, if your presence will not go with me, do not bring us up from here. Moses doesn't want to go to a place where God's presence is not already there. So he said in verse 16 of this chapter, For how shall it be known that I found favor in your sight, I and your people? Is it not in your going with us? So we are distinct, I and your people, from every other people on the face of the earth. Then the Lord responded, This very thing that you have spoken, the Lord said, I will do. For you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. When I was reflecting on this, uh, on this passage, I can't help but thank the Lord for His presence in my life. Because I know God will always be with me in good times and bad times. And that is the same for you. Not only that, God knows us by name. He knows us intimately. He knows exactly what is going on in our minds and in our hearts. He knows exactly our situation. And the good thing is, God will never leave us. God will never forsake us. Then Moses said to Yahweh, Please show me your glory. And this is how the Lord responded. The Lord said, I will make all my goodness pass before you and will proclaim before you my name, the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And then in verse 20, he said, But you cannot see my face, for man shall not see me and live. And then he said, Behold, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock. This is Yahweh talking to Moses. And while my glory passes as you stand on the rock, I will put you in a cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take my hand away, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. Because of our human condition, because of our sinfulness, we cannot come before God's presence. But praise God that on Christmas Day, God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross, to shed His blood on Calvary at the cross so that the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ covers us in the presence of God. So when God looks at us, when we look at God, God will not see our sin but the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And praise God for that. I like what uh, Nicole shared to us while uh, they are leading us in, uh, in singing. That eventually, the Christmas carols, the joy, you know, the, the festivities will, of Christmas will soon uh, fade in a couple of weeks' time. But his uh, prayer and his encouragement for us is that joy that we experience now, we will carry it on all throughout the year. And that is also my prayer. Uh, for me and for every one of us, 
that as we celebrate the, the beauty of Christmas, that joy and gladness in our hearts, God's presence in our life will be so real that no matter what challenges we face in 2018, you know, we will fear not because God is with us. So we praise the Lord for that. Emmanuel, Jesus Christ, the indescribable gift. He has given us access to the Father. When the Lord Jesus Christ was about to leave his disciples, one of, one of his disciples, uh, Philip, told Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. Then Jesus Christ uh, replied, Have I been with you so long and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? And then he said in verse 11, Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. In that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Wow, that's a beautiful reality. He said, You will know in that day that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. No one has ever seen the Father except the Lord Jesus Christ. And anyone who has Christ in his life has the Father in his life as well. God will never leave you. God will never forsake you. One thing I learned in our sabbatical is this. God will never bring us to a place where his presence is not already there. So last Christmas, uh, we were in, uh, in L.A., and we had the privilege to visit the Villa Reyes. If you have been with the church uh, for quite some time, you would know that this family is a fighter. Pastor Jun uh, Villa Reyes had stroke about uh, seven years ago, and then after three years, I think he had another stroke, and he has been uh, bedridden uh, ever since. And uh, I, I know this uh, family personally. I know some of you know them personally as well. But every time I will think about this family, you know, it just brings me great encouragement that even in their very difficult situation, you know, they're still hopeful and they're putting their trust in the Lord that God will see them through. So when we visited them, we are the ones, because we sense how God is so real in this family, and when Pastor Juna saw, uh, saw me and Linda, you know, he was smiling, trying to smile, and putting up his uh, hands and putting a thumbs up, and uh, tears just uh, flow from his, from his eyes. And uh, it is just an amazing sight on how God has been working in the life of Pastor Jun. And recently, I, I saw in the post of David that Pastor Jun can already sit down and eat, and he was able to stand. Uh, praise God for his wonderful work in the life of this family. A couple of months ago, uh, David uh, uh, Villare posted this. Uh, it says, uh, you are where God wants you to be at this very moment. Every experience is part of His divine plan. Amen? And then he, he made this comment when he posted this. He said, knowing God is in control of whatever circumstance you are going through takes away all fears. And doubts. All I can pray is that God will continue to bless this family with His presence as He fulfills His purposes and grace upon them. This family have direct access to God. They experience God's presence. God is always with them. God will never leave them. God will never forsake them. Just the same with us who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we need to thank God for the Lord Jesus Christ has given us direct access to Him anywhere and anytime. So therefore, the message for us is what? Fear not, God is with us. When the shepherds were terrified, the angel comforted and assured them that there's no need to fear, for the good news of great joy has come for all the people. The angels, the angels said to them, fear not. For behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. So instead of having fear in their hearts, the angels telling the shepherds, you should have faith in God. 
I do not know your situation right now, but if you have some giants in your life that you are fearing, God is telling you, fear not. God is with you. He will see you through. And this good news is for all people. The context of this passage, uh, the angel was talking about the good news for the nation of Israel, but eventually, theologically, this good news was made available to all the Gentiles, including you and me, in the present. But I want you to take note of verse 11. That pronoun you. The angel said, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. That is a very personal uh, a message. From the Lord through the angel to the shepherds. And every time we will read through this narrative, Every time we will hear this story, we need to understand that this message is also for us, for you and for me in the present. And this good news is that in the city of David, a Savior who is Christ the Lord is born. There are three titles of the Lord Jesus Christ in this one verse, and this is only uh, the passage in the New Testament where you will see this these th three titles of God, of Jesus, I mean. First, Jesus is our Savior. It means that He was sent by God to deliver us from our sins. So every time that we will uh, uh, celebrate Christmas, we must always uh, look beyond the celebration of the birth of the Messiah. We should always connect this in Calvary where the Lord Jesus Christ shed His blood on the cross to cover all our sins so that we can come before the presence of a holy God. So Jesus is our Savior. He delivered us from all our sins. Second, Jesus is the Christ. It means that He is the Anointed One. He is the promised Messiah of the Old Testament who will be coming from the royal line of, of David. And then third, Jesus is Lord. It means that the Lord Jesus Christ has sovereignty in all our life. He's the one who brings salvation to us, and He is the one who will fulfill His purposes and grace in our lives. And we must recognize Him as our Savior. When we recognize the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord, it means that there is a call for us to surrender all our life to Him, every aspect of our life to Him, must be surrendered. Not only a portion, not only 90%, not even 95%. If we call the Lord Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, we must give our all to Him. No conditions, no excuses. Someone has said, if Jesus is not Lord of all, He is not Lord at all. And I know... Many of you here have already professed your faith in the finished work of Christ on the cross. But if there is one person here who still needs to believe in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, my prayer is that the Holy Spirit will meet you where you are and bring you to a point of helplessness and hopelessness in life. Just like any one of us here in this auditorium, all of us are sinners. And one point in our life, God brought us to our knees and allowed us to put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we cried out, Lord, we need you. We cannot live in this world alone without the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray that as we go through this message in the next few minutes, the Lord will speak to you and allow you to recognize that all of us are sinners destined to be separated from God. And there is nothing we can do on this earth, no matter how good we are, no matter how many good works we are, we cannot earn that right to come before the presence of a holy God. And God is offering this indescribable gift to you right now. And just like any other gift, you can have it if you will receive it. I cannot do it for you. But I pray that God will do a miracle in your life today. The Lord Jesus Christ came as a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. 
Jesus is the promised Messiah, people are expecting that the Messiah coming from the royal line, when He comes in this world, there will be a full celebration. Just like the rulers and the emperors during the first century, when there is a birth in their family, they really have a big celebration. Everyone would know that they are celebrating the birth in the family. But in the case of Jesus Christ, our Savior, the Messiah, He did not enter into this world in a palace, but in the place of animals. And we must not miss the point of Luke in this verse. He wants us to recognize that the ordinary beginnings of the Lord Jesus Christ appropriately represents His mission to reach out to the humble, to the helpless, and to the hopeless. The shepherds in this narrative represent the lowly and the humble who receive God's message of salvation, who receive the good news that brings great joy. The Bible tells us that it is very difficult for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God because he is self-sufficient. It is also very difficult for the wise to receive God's free gift of salvation because it is foolishness to him. But nevertheless, God loves both of them because God wants all men to be saved. And if you have received the Lord Jesus Christ today, you will not only experience God's abiding presence, you will also experience His abiding peace. In verse 13, now after the announcement of the angel, suddenly a multitude of angels appeared praising God. And they declared, you know, God is worthy to be praised in the heavens for His work of salvation. And then on earth, His peace dwells among those who find favor in Him. If you will look at this verse in verse 9, uh, the, the, the angel said, The glory of the Lord appeared before the shepherds. Luke said, The glory of the Lord appears before the shepherds. And then here in verse 14, it says, uh, Glory to God in the highest. That word glory used in these two verses have different meanings. In verse 9, it refers to the, to the divine presence of God. Here in verse 14, the angels are giving glory to God. It means they are praising God, honoring God, adoring God for what He has done sending His Son on earth to be our Savior and to be our Lord. But in the next part, it says here, And on earth, peace among those with whom He is pleased. In this context, uh, the peace that was used in this verse refers to the peace among men, which does not refer or does not mean that hostilities between men will stop. It will not. We know that. There's still hostility between men, even in our relationships. But what uh, the Scripture is saying is that there will be peace among men as they are reconciled to Jesus Christ, the Messiah. In Romans 5.1, Paul said, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God, through our Lord Jesus Christ. So in this, in this Christmas story, uh, in this indescribable gift, God gives us His divine presence. God gives us His divine peace. And on the basis of our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we have peace with God. And this peace is the kind of peace that is not dependent on the absence of problems, but on the presence of God. In our life. This time uh, last year, God uh, gave me and Linda an opportunity to take care of my parents in the U.S. You know the story, most of you know, that uh, Papang uh, went home to be with the Lord uh, April 6. And I believe at the age of 94, he has lived a full life. So during this uh, season last year in L.A., uh, Papang has been staying in the nursing facility for six months already. And we have been uh, bringing him to the hospital, to Veterans Hospital, from the nursing facility to Veterans Hospital in West L.A. Uh, about six months during this period. And, uh, you know, from the nursing facility to the Veterans Hospital in L.A., where I thought there was no traffic, 
it will take us about one and a half to two hours of drive. So, hindi ko na miss yung traffic sa Manila last year. But it's a very difficult uh, uh, time for us. Looking back, it was not easy, especially uh, for my mom. Uh, every morning, all that when she wakes up, all that she will be thinking about is my father. And we will be there, you know, going back and forth from her home to the nursing facility, just attending to what, uh, to what Papa needs. And I saw in Mommy her unconditional love and unwavering commitment uh, to my father. They have been married for 63 years, and it's just amazing on how God has been sustaining them with His love. But in spite of the sickness of Papang, you know, God's peace just overwhelmed our hearts. Especially during uh, those nights when uh, Papang will call me from his bed and tell me, Lito, pag-pray mo ko. Lito, uh, basahan mo ako ng Bible. And then hearing those words na, Lito, pinalalakas mo yung loob ko. It just brings joy and peace in my heart. This picture was taken uh, during one of those nights when uh, I went through the gospel with him and he reaffirmed, God reaffirmed to me that again, my father's already in his presence right at this very moment because God has given him the faith to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. So the, uh, the other day, I was looking back at my journal entries last year and I saw this reflection from my utmost uh, for his highest. Uh, this entry, I am not really sure if this is a paraphrase from me, but this idea came from this devotional. It says, A disciple of Christ believes God orchestrates every event in life. This belief should not only remain in our heads, but should change our hearts. It involves surrendering every result to God. And then it says, Every pain, every trial, every disappointment, surrender to God. And he will turn it to peace, triumph, and delight. So if there is any heaviness in your heart right now, God's message for you is this. Leave it at the foot of the cross. He doesn't want you to leave this place and celebrate your, your Christmas with your families with that heaviness in your heart. And God is telling you that whatever problem you have, just focus on him because we have a big God who is greater than any of our concerns in this temporal world. Because the Lord Jesus Christ is with us, we should fear not. Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's my prayer for you. Kahit mapuyat ka ngayong gabi bukas, I pray that God will give you rest. Not only physical rest, but more importantly, emotional and spiritual rest. So in God's uh, indescribable gift in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, God has given us His divine presence. God has blessed us with His peace. And I believe that God also blesses us with His provision. Jesus said, But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added on to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. We need to remember that God provides for everything that we need in His perfect timing. The Lord uh, blessed us with a very good stay in San Francisco, in Napa Valley last December, and other beautiful place, places in Northern California, but uh, one uh, great blessing we experienced during our sabbatical was God's abundant and timely and never-ending provision. God provided everything that we need, even more during our seven-month stay in the U.S. and in Canada. But the amazing thing is, God did not give us all the resources that we need at the beginning for the seven months. 
When I was still in the business before I became a pastor, I will not go to the U.S. without me computing my budget and having those resources before I even you know, plan to go to U.S. for a vacation or any vacation for that matter. And I'm sure that is true for every one of us, right? You will not go on a one-week, two-week vacation, whether in a cruise or in Singapore, Australia, Europe, wherever, without you having the resources that you need, right? That's part of being diligent. And I think that is just right for us. But when Linda and I had our annual time of reflection last year in, in Lipa, now we are recalling uh, what God has been doing this year and even uh, uh, last year, uh, Linda recalled how Emmanuel, God with us, provided the manna for the Israelites in the wilderness on a daily basis. And she said, you know, honey, I remember how God provided for the Israelites through the manna every day. God did not give them what they need for a week or for even a month. And God did exactly the same for us. He did not give us the resources for seven months at the beginning, but He certainly provided for our needs daily when we need it, and oftentimes more than what we expected. He gave it in His perfect timing without us worrying about it. And what God has done to me, God can also do to you. What we need to do, and this is what we did, was to focus on God's presence in our life. We just fix our eyes on Jesus and recognize how the Spirit of God is moving in our midst. And what we did is to just do what God wants done in our life every moment, nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. And we have taken what God has given to us and we just enjoyed it. And that same promise is available to you if you just recognize God's presence in your life. And if you fix your eyes on Jesus. And it makes our journey more exciting, right? So even upon our return, it's the same. And we, we are, you know, we are just experiencing God's amazing work in our life. Beyond our imagination. But the key is to recognize that during this Christmas, God has given us His indescribable gift in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And He will never leave us he will never forsake us. So earlier this week, I had the privilege to speak before the youth leaders of GCF Ortigas. So last month, Pastor JP, the youth pastor, invited me and uh, uh, gave me these dates. And the initial plan was that we will have our uh, retreat in Balay Indang, in Indang, Cavite. And I have been in that place, so I said, oh, that will be a good place. I can have my own place of reflection before I give the message to these uh, next-gen leaders. But uh, the night before, Sunday night, uh, I learned from SJ that uh, there was a change of venue. So from Balay Indang, we moved to Canyon Woods because one of the uh, uh, youth leaders, the family, have a place inside Canyon Woods. So we'll be staying in a house. When I, uh, when I learned that we'll be staying in a house, in a house, okay, we'll be about 30 to 40. Even if that is a very huge house, it will be a challenge, right? Especially the use of the restroom. And then SJ said, uh, Dad, uh, we also need to bring our own towels. Uh, we need to bring our own plates and utensils because uh, it might not be enough uh, supply. So, my initial thought was, wow, this could be a challenge. You know? But... Uh, I know God is with me, so I prepared what I need to bring and prepared myself for what God has in store for me. So Monday morning, I, I left uh, ahead of the group. It was a two and a half hour drive. It was raining you know, from Manila all the way to, to Canyon Woods. And it was a very good time of me alone in the car you know, with that uh, uh, rain uh, falling and just communing with God. I, I love that. I love that. Uh, I love those moments with the Lord. So I arrived there around 2 p.m. And since they are not yet there, I cannot go to the house. I went to the clubhouse to freshen up, to use the, to use the restroom. And then after uh, uh, using the restroom, I went to the receptionist. And I said, you know, I asked, uh, Miss, uh, can I go to the coffee shop and have a drink? 
I, I will be speaking in a retreat, uh, but they are not yet here. I'll be staying in one of the houses of the members. And the lady said, uh, uh, sorry, you cannot. You need to have an endorsement uh, from the member. So I smiled and said, okay. And then when I turned away from the counter, I saw a longtime friend walking in, a couple. And they were so glad to see me. I haven't had fellowship with them for at least 10 years already. And they asked me, uh, Pastor, what are you doing here? Oh, I'll be speaking in a retreat with the uh, next gen of Ortigas, but they are not yet here. Oh, come, come. Come to the coffee shop. We'll have lunch together. <laughs> so I smiled at the receptionist, you know, but I did not mention And I just smiled and say, I did not only have a drink. I had a full meal of tawilis and egg and fried rice. And then uh, this couple ordered uh, sinigang na, na pork and uh, bangus. So I had a full meal. And I even had a drink and a dessert. God is good. And we shared our journey together and just encouraging on how God is moving in their needs. And then when, when, the, when the lady, when the woman uh, learned that I'll be staying in a house with 30 young people, he said, what? You'll be staying there, Pastor? You won't be comfortable there. How will you use the restroom? They are 30. Wait, I will check. I still have a coupon. I'll get you a room in the condotel. So I said, wow, I will take it as a big blessing from God. Continued our conversation, then I left five, and then uh, went to the retreat, and I spoke, uh, encouraged them. And I'm also encouraged to see these people, young people. When I was still in Ortigas, you know, some of them are five and seven years old, and now they are leaders in the youth ministry. And I can see what God is doing in GCF Ortigas, especially in the next gen. And I, I'm just anticipating the greater things that God will do in GCF. So after that, you know, I, uh, I brought SJ. SJ, come, you know, we will have a room of our own. So we went to the condotel, and you know how good God is? When it rains, it pours. Why? Because we have ample supply of towels. <laughs> SJ, you know, take a bath now, and then use a towel, and then wash your face, use another towel again. No, we did not do that. Huh? We did not do that. You know, we are. We say we are. We need to take care of our environment. So we only use one. You know, but you know, in, in all of these things, uh, I think it's very important for us to recognize God's presence in our life, because when we recognize God's presence in our life, we will see how He is moving, and we will see things from a very different perspective. We should not focus on our problems but fix our eyes on Jesus. Then and only then, we will be content, we will have peace, and we will have joy in our life. At the end of the shepherd's story, we will see three responses. So when the angel departed, the shepherds went over to Bethlehem and confirmed all that was said to them. Then after seeing Mary, Joseph, and the baby lying in a manger, they told others what the angels revealed to them. And then the first group, of people was this, you know, in verse 18, and all who heard it, all who heard from what the shepherds had seen, they wondered of what the shepherds told them. The word wondered here doesn't equate faith and belief. I hope some of them believe, but when Luke used the word wondered, he's not referring to faith. Because he used the same word when the Lord Jesus Christ was in Nazareth. And the people were amazed. They wondered by the teachings of Jesus, by they rejected Jesus. When a crowd were amazed at the greatness of God, when Jesus performed miracles, they condemned Jesus. And when the teachers of the law and the chief priests were amazed by the intelligence of Jesus, they convicted him. So it is not enough for us to know who the Lord Jesus Christ is and be amazed on who He is and what He's doing in our life. What we know about the Lord Jesus Christ should change and make an impact in every dimension of our existence in life. What we know about God should affect our hearts. And many times, the, the most difficult journey to travel is from the mind to the heart. 
because there is a block in between. And I pray if you are not sensing God's presence in your life, maybe you are focused so much on your problems. And I pray that this message that God has for us today, fear not, God is with us. We'll just empower you to just cast all your cares upon the Lord. The Lord Jesus Christ came so that we may live life to the full. Do not rob yourself of the joy of being a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. So do not leave this place still carrying that problem and burdens and worries and anxieties in your life. Leave it here. Just like how, how Mary and the shepherds responded in verse 19, this is the response of Mary. Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. He, she really reflected on what God is doing, and it really changes in her heart. He tried to sense what God, what God is doing, and he saw it uh, as a great privilege that God has chosen her to carry the Lord Jesus Christ in her womb. And then the shepherds, they returned. And what did they do? Glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. So just like the shepherds and Mary, it is my prayer that as we went through this shepherd's story, God will give us the encouragement that this Christmas and even in 2018, fear not. Why? Because God is with us. And I also pray that this uh, Christmas celebration that we will be having with your families, relatives, friends, uh, reunions, that God will give you an opportunity to show and share the love and the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. God save us, right? And we must share it to others. And I have a good news for you. For the past years, I've been praying for God to give us a new piano. A baby grand. Recently, someone gave 1.2 million Christmas gift to our church family, and last uh, Thursday, we purchased it. Praise God. <laughs> this will be delivered this coming Friday. Indeed, God's timing is perfect. So, pwede na akong mag-apply sa choir. May baby grand na tayo. But I have another, a greater news for you. You want a greater news? Last uh, Christmas cantata, you know, at least 40 plus people prayed to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Another great news you want? Alam nyo na to. The angel told this to the shepherd. Fear not, God is with us. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your inexpressible gift in the person of Jesus Christ. Emmanuel, God with us. Lord, I pray that if there is even one person here in this auditorium, who still need to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray, Father, that you will give that person that sense of hopelessness and helplessness in his or her life, just like any one of us here. We are all sinners in need of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that you will not allow them, Father, to leave this place without accepting that indescribable gift in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. I ask, Father, that you will speak to that person. I cannot do it for them, but I know that you do. May you do a miracle, Lord, in their life. And give them, Lord, affirmation that as, I, as they recognize their sinfulness, as they believe in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ paid for all their sins, the past, the present, and the future, they don't have any reason to fear because you will never leave them nor forsake them. And for the rest of us, Father, we want to thank you for this indescribable gift 
Thank you, Lord, for the assurance that this Christmas and in this coming 2018, uh, you have commanded us, fear not, because you will never leave us, you will never forsake us. And I pray that you will just empower them to just leave all their problems here at the foot of the cross. Allow them, Father, to, to imagine the Lord Jesus Christ uh, telling them, cast all your cares upon me, and I will take care of it Focus on how my Father is working in your life and fix your eyes on me. And I will bless you with my presence, with my peace, and with my provision. May you remind us, Father, that Jesus Christ is the light that overcomes the darkness. He is our sword. He is our shield. Troubles may still linger in us when we leave this place, but we will not fear because the Lord Jesus Christ goes before us. He stands behind us. He's always at our side. He's our friend. He reigns forever. Our strength is in Him. He alone can save. In Him, we can have victory in our life. You hear me when I call. You are my morning song. Though darkness fills the night, it cannot hide the light. Whom shall I fear? You crush the enemy underneath my feet. You are my sword and shield, though troubles linger still. Whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me, I know who stands behind, the God of angel armies is always by my side, the one who reigns forever, he is a friend of mine, the God of angel armies is always by my side. May I invite everyone to rise as we declare that the God of angel armies is by us. Let's sing, my strength is in your name. My strength is in your name, for you alone can save. You will deliver me, yours is the victory. Shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me. I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The one who reigns forever. He a friend of mine, the God of angel armies, is always by my side. We sing, nothing formed against us shall stand. Nothing formed against me shall stand.
may clap offering to the Lord. Before I uh, close in prayer, can you turn to the person nearest you and say, Fear not, God is with us. Fear not, God, God, is, God is with us. us. Lord, we thank you for your presence. And as you dismiss us, Father, from this place, may you continue to bless us with your presence, with your peace, and with your provision as we worship you, as we come and adore you in our life. May you be honored. May you be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's sing together as one church. Oh, come, let us adore him. Yeah.